Hi, this is Fady from Harvey Productions and welcome again for another video. Today I want to talk to you about my Universal Audio setup. In my studio currently I have three Universal Audio interfaces. I use the Apollo X6, the Apollo X8P, and the Apollo X4. I also have the Universal Audio 4710D preamp that is connecting through ADAT. Um, the purpose from today's video is how I am routing all of my interfaces, all three of them, how I'm daisy chaining them, the setup, the routing, we're going to go through the Apollo console, the IO, in inputs and outputs. We're going to go through different ways to set it up. Also, I'll show you guys how I have it set up in my studio. I've done multiple changes over the years until I found what is most convenient for me and was my setup. I'm hoping this would also help you with routing and setting up your Universal Audio Apollo interfaces, whether it's the X or the models before. And uh, the goal is that you use all the features and the potentials of it, whether you're using it for mixing, for recording, for mastering, uh, whatever, or for monitoring purpose, whatever you need. My goal is to help you establish that in your recording setup. So before we dig in, let's mention a couple things that are very important to understand and know about the Universal Audio interfaces. The ones that I have are the Thunderbolt ones, so the, all the newer ones, the X or Thunderbolt one. The black ones before that are also Thunderbolt 1, Thunderbolt 2. Um, and then the silver ones before that, they had some that are Thunderbolt and then some that are Firewire. Um, what I'm about to talk about applies mostly on the Thunderbolt because of the daisy chaining. So whether you have Thunderbolt 2 or Thunderbolt 3, you can even mix and match between them, which I've done before. I had one that is Apollo X and one is Apollo Silver Quad Thunderbolt, and then it still worked using a Thunderbolt 3 to Thunderbolt 2 converter, and then you can daisy chain them, and that totally works. And you can grab all the features from both, except for one feature that, which is the headroom, you're gonna have to work with the lower headroom, because the X has plus 24 dBU headroom, but the silver and the older ones have only plus 20 dBU headroom, so you'll have to work with the lower headroom for that reason. Another thing that uh, we should mention about the Apollo interfaces before we dig in, is that when you daisy chain them, uh, they all work in series, but you can only have one unit that monitors your speaker. And it's the one that controls your speaker, not multiple. And then we'll talk through that in details here. As well as ADAT. Let's mention ADAT really quick here because it will apply on our setup and it will be crucial to understand. So ADAT is a form of digital communication between two units. On the back of the Apollo X8P and the X6, they both have ADAT inputs and outputs. And you can see for yourself, it will say two ADAT inputs, one and two, and two ADAT outputs, one and two. And the question that I personally wondered with for a while, and a lot of people ask the same, is oh, does that mean can I can plug in two separate ADAT units and then route more channels through it? And the answer is no. Basically, input, uh, let's talk output first. ADAT output, so basically your unit is sending out digital audio through those ADATs, and then ADAT one and two, if you're using at 48 hertz sample rate, then you get eight channels. So output one sends out eight channels, and output two sends out the same exact eight channels, just mirrored, basically, like a duplication of it. So sure, you can send them to two different places or two different units, but they are both going to be receiving the same exact eight channels. Now, when you jump to higher sample rate, like 96 Hertz and above, um, then uh, each channel only carries four audio channels. So that way, the only way for you to get all eight, you basically need to use output one, that's going to be channel one to four and output two, that's going to be channel five to eight. And the same exact principle applies on input. So on inputting into your ADAT, you have ADAT one and two inputs. ADAT one, it will be input one to eight and ADAT two, it will be just the duplication of that input. And then if you are inputting at higher sample rate, then uh, 48, so if you're going 96 or above, so input one will be channel one to four, and then input two will be channel five to eight. Now that we get an idea of how that works, then in our current setup, I have actually several inputs and outputs connected to my ADATs, 
Um, and then we'll talk about what do I have connected to my ADAT, how I have it routed. That applies to the 4710D. That is actually going ADAT. My monitor controller unit, which is the M908, is also going ADAT. My in-ear monitoring for live tracking session in the control room is going through the Behringer ADAT unit as well. And then my Hilo converters is also connected ADAT. I have several ADAT units connected to my uh, Apollos and then I'll walk you guys through it and how I have it routed. Uh, so let's, let's dig in on the computer screen over here and then we'll just walk through it and I'll try to explain how I have my setup currently done with Apollos and ADAT. Okay, so let's go through this right here. So this is my Apollo console. And if I pull up my settings in here, let's start one at a time. I'm running right now, everything is running at 48 Hertz and then input delay compensation is at medium to long. So that way when I have multiple inserts on the Apollo, it doesn't freak out. And then Qbus, I'm running it to the maximum. I'm using digital mirror on, and I'm gonna explain about that in just a second and what that means. And then um, I'm using the Headroom at plus 24 dBU uh, because I'm using all of my Apollos are the X, X model, so they all have that feature in them. And then you can see here, this is my Apollo X6, this is my Apollo X8P, and this is my Apollo X4. So let's kind of talk through the setup right now. I am choosing the Apollo X6. So it depends on how the order you have it in here, it actually decides what is your monitoring unit and you can see that little speaker right here next to it so right now that means the apollo x6 is the monitoring one if i grab the x8 and actually move it to the top you see the speaker is going to load for a second and here's the speaker became at the top where x8 has become my monitoring unit so i'm going to bring it back to the current setup okay everything's working fine now so apollo x6 why am I using the X6 as my monitoring unit? Because on the back of the X6, there is SPDIF outputs. The X8P does not have that feature. So that's where the digital mirror says here at the top, on and off. Basically, it mirrors your main outputs. So instead of coming analog out of your main outputs, I'm actually coming digital out of my SPDIF and then that goes directly to my M908 unit because it has bit of input on the back of it. Why am I doing this? Because if you go digital to digital, that means I'm not using the Apollo converters and I'm using now the Grace M908 converters to go from digital to analog. So it's a DA conversion into my speakers because the converters on that unit are way higher quality than the Apollo X units. Apollo X converters are not bad, but I'm using way better converters on my uh, M908, so why would I use the Apollo converters at that point? That's why I chose the Apollo X6 to become my um, main monitoring unit. Um, a lot of people in this setup, they would actually use the X4 as the main monitoring unit, and the reason why, because the X4 also have a built-in talkback mic, which is a great feature. In my scenario, it doesn't apply, or I don't need it, because my, again, my Grace monitor controller unit it's becoming like the heart of my studio, which I'll make a separate video just about this and about what do I have in it. But my M908 has a built-in talkback and has built-in Q outputs and everything. So I'm using this to monitor out to my control room and for anything that I need for that reason. So back again in here. So I got all three, they're all being recognized and they're all used. Okay, so right here on the X8P, you'll see it has Another feature is called digital input, digital output, SPDIF and ADAT. It says SPDIF, but it, it doesn't actually have the SPDIF. It uses the ADAT channel as SPDIF. And the difference between those is SPDIF is a stereo, and in the ADAT you get up to eight channels. So I'm using ADAT for input and outputs instead of SPDIF. That way I can get full eight channels out of that. For the Apollo X6, that feature is not there because the X6 have both, have an actual SPDIF on the back and ADAT. So you actually get both of them at the same time. So I get the A channels and I get a SPDIF channel. And then the digital mirror, if it's on, it basically mirrors my main left and right outputs and it sends the same exact signal to the SPDIF outputs as well. Okay, so now that we talked about this, 
monitor mode, I'm using stereo. All my surround setups, I actually use my Grace M908 for it as well, so I'm not using it from here. Um, let's, let's now jump into the IO, which is the most complicated part of setting up your Apollo. And I've gone through that IO probably the last four years, I maybe had seven or eight different because I would do one and then after a little bit I'm like, oh, I'm missing one or two and three and then I'll do a new one and then another new one. And then this has been the most recent one I've been using for over a year now. I've been extremely happy with it and it's been very practical for everything that I use in the studio. And then uh, I'll walk you guys through it so you can build a similar one for your IO with your Apollo setup. Whether you have one unit, two units, three units, four units, uh, same principle will apply. Um, so I would go here mode, I would go custom, and then inputs and outputs. I use Pro Tools as my DAW. Uh, I now have Pro Tools Ultimate, which is HD, but back before that, Pro Tools were only limited to 32 channels if you don't have Pro Tools HD for a non native Pro Tools interface. And then they moved it up to 64 channels now if you have a, a normal Pro Tools IO. And then I have Pro Tools uh, Ultimate. I can have more, but honestly, 64 covers all what I need. So this should be good for you to do 64 ins and outs. Whether you're using Pro Tools, whether you're using Logic, Ableton, they will all support 64 in and out right now. Okay, so let's go top to bottom. And you guys are going to see some things are turned off and then some things are grayed out and I'll explain why here in a second. So the way I started doing it, I made sure, and that was a mistake that I've done at the beginning, my inputs and outputs, they correspond to each other as much as I can because it will make your life so much easier in your DAW later on. So you'll see here, I have my outputs on the Apollo X6 that's output left and right. So obviously, because I don't have an input that corresponds to this, I just use my virtual instruments inputs from the Apollo. So virtual one and virtual two became my input for this. Then after that, you go to Apollo X6. Here's mic one, and mic two input corresponding to line one and line two, and then line three, line four, line five and six inputs and corresponds to line three and four and five and six outputs. I use these line outputs for analog summing and that's why I go in here and actually name them some one, two, three, four. Uh, that way I can see them in the DAW with the correct name so I know what that is for and I don't get all confused about it. Okay, so now going to the Apollo X8P right here. So I did so now the Apollo X8P has eight outputs plus your monitor output. But again, because I'm not monitoring from the Apollo X8P, the monitor outputs in this scenario becomes an extra output, which means you have 10 outputs out of that unit now, which is really cool because I wanted 16 outputs to use for analog summing. So in this scenario, I threw the monitor outputs as summing number seven and eight and then there's no corresponding inputs and I leave it empty. So I leave it offline. And then I start after that at line output one to eight and that becomes nine to 16. And then I also go in here as X8P mic input one all the way to mic input eight. And the X8P has eight mic pre's and they all um, so they all work as mic inputs. And then if you want to use the line inputs, it has a completely separate DB25 for line inputs or those jacks on the mic inputs are combo jacks where you can insert it inside of it. So I, I really like this feature a lot because I now I can assign my inputs to be completely separate from my mic inputs. My line inputs are separate from my line inputs and I leave both plugged in to the X8P at the same time. A practical example to this is that I have my patch bay. I have eight outputs from my patch bay. It goes as eight inputs on the line in on my Apollo X8P. But I have my snake, which is from the live room back there, connects as eight mic inputs on the back of the Apollo X8P. And that way I can keep both plugged in at all times 
um, and I use both depending from the console settings, is that channel going to be a mic or a line input? All right, so as we're moving down, so I applied the same principle to the X4, because again, the monitor outputs becomes extra line outputs. So I have X4 monitor outputs, and then I have X4 line out one, two, three, and four. And then right now, I don't have these going anywhere, uh, the line outputs, because I, I kind of have all my setup for what I need. Um, and then I have here the X4 inputs, one, two, three, and four. Um, why do I want to keep inputs and outputs correspond to one another this way? Because in the DAW, there's a very cool feature. I use Pro Tools, so I can explain it from a Pro Tools perspective. It's called Hardware Insert. And basically, I can send a round trip from a line output from the Apollo, goes to one of my hardware units. Let's say I'm going to use Channel 1 line output. It's going to go to my SSL bus, channel one and two. So it's SSL bus, it's a stereo bus. So channel one and two line outputs go to the SSL bus and then they come back into line input one and two. If they are on the same channel number on the console, on the Apollo console, in Pro Tools, I can find that insert and then I can uh, load it as a plugin inside my DAW and it would automatically create a full round trip through this. The advantages of this is you don't get the latency because it pulls a lot of CPU to preserve latency. And I don't have to, I used to, the old way to do it is I would create an audio channel. I create a send out of that audio channel to the line outputs corresponding to my SSL. And then I'll create another audio channel to receive the inputs coming back from the SSL to print it. But if I use hardware inserts, I don't have to do all of that. It saves me a lot of work and it saves me latency as well. Uh, and delay. And I'll explain my Pro Tools routing, DAW, and setup with the Apollo in a separate video. But this one, I want to just focus on the Apollo setup and how I have it routed. That's why going in here, making sure that these are corresponding to one another will save you a lot of trouble in the future. So you guys can see I'm starting first with all my main line inputs and line outputs, mic inputs and line outputs. The only thing that is not in here was the virtual at the top, this one. And because I had like an unused channel and I decided to just throw it in there. After I finished, so this is all the way down to channel 24, is my last Apollo inputs. Then I go after that, I'm now start to working on all my digital inputs. So this is now we're going to dig into the ADAT setup that I have on my Apollo and how I have it routed and set up. So remember, I got three Apollos. And because I got three Apollos, each one of them has ADAT in it. I'm only using the ADAT for Apollo X8P and X6. And currently, I don't have anything plugged into the ADAT of the Apollo X4. So we're going to go through this. So you guys can see here, I'm starting with the X6. And here is all the ADAT for the X6, all ADAT channels and inputs, and all ADAT channel outputs. Right now, for my X6, I got two things plugged into it. I got my Hilo converter plugged into it. And then this is only processing two channels, left and right. Um, so I got channel 1 and 2 is input, and channel 1 and 2, Hilo outputs. And that is when I master, a lot of times, all my conversion that goes through my hardware units, all my round trip conversion happens through my Lynx converter and not through my Apollo because they will have way higher quality. So I would grab the analog output out of the Hilo and it go through my analog chain and then it comes back as analog input into the Hilo, gets converted into a digital audio and then through ADAT, transfers to the Apollo into my DAW. And that way I'm not using any of the Apollo converters at that point to preserve the quality of my audio at a higher converters. If you don't have a nicer converters in the Apollo, you obviously don't need this. But in this scenario, because I have the Hilo converters, which is are way superior to the Apollo, I do it that way. So this is the first thing that is plugged in here. I have a cable goes input from uh, it goes input into the Apollo, output into the Hilo, and then vice versa. 
And the other thing that I'm using the ADAT for, I have the Behringer PowerPlay P16 units in my studio. And I only use those for I monitor a band out there in the live room. So that way they can monitor their own mixes and adjust their volumes and all that kind of stuff. And how I have this set up in my studio, it was a painful process at the beginning to figure out the easiest and the simplest way to set it up that I finally got to a comfortable place to set it up. My Apollo X8P ADAT Output 2. So ADAT Output 1 is going to the Hilo. ADAT Output 2 is going into the ADAT input of the PowerPlay 16. And that, what it does, it basically sends eight channels of audio into the PowerPlay. So the P16 can take up to 16 channels. So the first eight are coming from the Apollo X8P. And then the advantage of this, I'm not running any analog cables and I'm not also using any of the analog outputs from the Apollo because I need them for different things, for routing through analog units or for analog summing, for a whole bunch of other stuff. So I want to preserve all these analog outputs for that reason. Somebody would ask me, okay, then while you're sending, the first two channels of this are the same going to the Hilo, are the same going to the PowerPlay P16. Correct but I never use the Hilo and the PowerPlay inputs at the same moment. And the reason why is when I'm using Hilo is mostly when I'm mixing and mastering, but the PowerPlay when I'm using them is when I am tracking and engineering a recording session. So that way I don't have a problem running, uh, having a mirrored signal in this scenario. Okay, so let's go, keep going down to the X8P and then the X8P has two different units connected to it. It has my 4710, which is the mic pre, it's a four channel mic pre, it's total A channel, has four channel mic pre and four channel line inputs that are made by Universal Audio. It's an incredible unit, absolutely love it and use it a lot. And then it connects through ADAT to my unit, so that way it's not using any of my line inputs, it's all digital inputs. And I also have the power play the P16 connected as well. So if we walk through it here, you guys can see in here, I have on the inputs, I have my 4710 mic input one, mic input two, mic input three, mic input four. And these I named them summing because that's the analog summing stereo input that is coming on the back of the 47D. And then I have another extra line input in here that I'm currently not using. A lot of times I would plug in to it any extra auxiliary instruments if I need it. And then the last one, the line input on my uh, 47D, I'm actually using the mic from my M908 monitor controller, and I'm just coming as a line output from that unit into the 4710D line inputs. And the reason why I'm doing it that way, so I don't want to waste any of my inputs on the mic inputs. I'm, I'm only wasting one of my line inputs, but I'm preserving all my line input, my mic inputs for tracking sessions. Um, so that's all the ADAT inputs in here. And then in terms of ADAT outputs, actually the, the Apollo X8P is going to two places in the outputs. One output is going into my P16, the Behringer P16, and that gives it channel nine to 16. That way I have now 16 channels of audio being sent to, through those personal mixer units for the bands to mix themselves if they needed to. And then, and I'll show you guys how I have it routed in here in just a second. And then the second output, I actually have it going to my monitor controller, which is my M908. It takes a DAT input. And the reason why I do it that way is for surround mixing and then as well as mix referencing. So I would have, let's say, in my Pro Tool session and I'm mixing, and I have my full mix, and then I wanna reference multiple songs, so I will grab the audio files from these songs or purchase that song, grab the WAV4 format for it, and import it into my Pro Tools session, and I will assign the output of that specific channel to ADAT 1 and 2, and then assign the output of my second mix reference to ADAT output 3 and 4, and the one, if I have three or four, I'll just keep assigning them to, to different ADAT outputs, and then on my M908 unit, 
I can select the input of all these units and then just A, B my mixes really quick. So I grab the chorus of that song, the chorus of the song that I'm mixing and I'm trying to reference. Uh, and then I would play it and I will just go between my main input or my ADAT input. And I switch back and forth to listen to both and then make sure that I am uh, my reference is accurate. And I love that feature about the M908 is one of the main things I enjoy about it. Being able to take digital conversion. And again, because it's digital, going into the M908, I'm not using any of the Apollo converters. And when I'm playing it back through the speakers, even in my mix reference, I am mix referencing using the same converters, which are a mastering great converters from the M908, which I love that feature. Okay, and as we scroll down, you guys see the ADAT from the unit C, which is the X4, and it's grayed out. I have it set up, but it's grayed out because currently I don't have anything plugged into it, so that's why it's grayed out. But I have it set up, so if I ever plug in anything to it, it will innocently be ready to go. Then after that, I have my virtual instruments. Uh, actually, this one is duplicated, should not be there. So this should be none, since I already have it at the very top. So I have my virtual instruments, and I have them in the order. The blue are the virtual instruments from the Apollo X6. And then the that green is four virtual instruments from the X8P. And then after that, four virtual instruments from the Apollo X4. Then after that, at the end here, outputs, I have my Q outputs. I have Q1 and Q2 left and right. Um, I never really had to use those because I routed in a different way, but if you need them, like here you go, you got them. You can always go into any of the uh, unused inputs in here and assign something like SPDIF input or something, an extra input that you don't have a place to set up or it doesn't have a corresponding channel, so you can use it for that reason. Okay, so let's go, now that we went through my entire IO, Let's go, go through the setup. So when you connect two Apollo units together through a Thunderbolt cable, you don't need to connect a clocking cable, which is the BNC cable to adjust the clock, because the Thunderbolt cable will carry all communication audio-wise and clocking as well. But when you connect an ADAT unit, like my 4710D, you have to connect a clock. This is one of Clock is always like a mystical thing where it's like, oh, what do what are clocking for and which clock do I choose and which one becomes my master clock? Um, it's, clocking is actually crucial for your setup and you want to make sure you got your clock right. If you have multiple devices that are communicating digitally to one another, especially through ADAT, you want to make sure that everything is clocked. So everything has... Um, that BNC cable coming from clock out from one unit to a clock into the second unit, clock in from the second unit to clock, I'm sorry, clock out from the second unit to clock into the third unit and on until you close your loop completely. And then when you do this, the, the main unit that you start with and then you run the whole loop and come back to it, that unit, you wanna choose it to become your master clock. What are the criteria for, like, how do you know? Like right now I have my Apollos, my X8, X6, X8, and X4. Either one of those could be the master clock. I can also choose my 4710D to be the master clock. I can also choose my Hilo converters to be my master clock. And I choose my M908 to be the master clock. Which one? So in this scenario, you wanna look up the specs and the quality of the clocking inside each unit and then see which one has the higher clocking quality and then you would make that your master clock because it does make a difference. In this scenario, my M908 is the master clock and I'm choosing the M908 because it has a way higher quality clock so it becomes my master clock and now everything else in my whole chain clocking when I choose the setup, I choose the setup to be word clock. And you guys can see down here on my Apollo unit, you can choose where the clock is coming from. So I'm using word clock. And then the same on my 4710D here, it's set up to word clock, the same as my Lynx. Uh, Hilo converters is set up as word clock as well. And then the M908 is set up as internal clock because it's the master clock that is clocking every 
thing together. Now that we talked about the clocking setup, uh, now let's gonna go through the console and how I have this console set up right now. It's pretty straightforward. You guys can see here is my analog input one and two for the Apollo. And then my three and four, five and six are actually coming from my Focusrite analog pre's in here as line inputs. Then this is my ADAT one and two. They're going to my links converters. And then after that is my virtual instruments. Now jumping into the second unit, which is my X8P. It has, uh, this is four stereo mic pre's and then you, you can click on it and unlink it and then it becomes mono if you want to. Uh, so here's these. And then after that, I have all my 4710D ADAT units plugged in. So here's mic one and two from the 4710D, mic three and four, here's input five and six, and then which I've been using for summing. And then here's my focus right. I have one extra focus right connected to the back of it. And here's my talk back input. And then here's the virtual for the X8P. And then the same applies for the X4. Um, here's the mic inputs and here's the virtual. I don't have any ADAT connected to it. Let's talk in-ear monitoring from here. This is a very, very tricky thing sometimes to in-ear monitor from the Apollo console. But in my opinion, UAD have genius ways to do it. It's the best console for in-ear monitoring that I've actually seen out there on the market. So there's multiple ways. Now that I have three units, I have six headphone outputs because each unit has two headphone outputs so I can send six headphones to different people. And um, let's kind of uh, walk through it in here. So I'm gonna show my Q outputs in here. And then you guys can see, let's leave it right there. So this is Apollo X6, Apollo X8P, Apollo X4. Let's start with the X6. HP is headphone one, headphone two. So right now I can say headphone one from the X6, because it's being lit up, corresponds to Q1 or corresponds to the main stereo mix that I have in my control room that I'm listening to, or I can make it mono. So let's say um, headphone one, you're giving that to your drummer and he wants a really decent drum mix in his ears. So I would set up Q1 and then Q1, I have four cues. So Q1 is my drum mix. It's coming from my headphone one straight to his in-ears and then Right here, I can mirror it to something. If I am analog plugging the headphones to his, uh, from my headphone output number one on my Apollo, then I don't need to digitally mirror it. When do I digitally mirror? Is because I also use the P16 units. So I'm gonna take the whole mix, stereo mix Q1 left and right, and I'm gonna digitally mirror it to ADAT one and two of the X6. And then when I do this, what does it do? It basically channel one and two on my Behringer units now becomes my Q1. So if he has one of these Behringer units sitting next to him and the drums, he can plug into it and channel one and two becomes that mix. And then, so after doing this, I will go here into my sends and then here's the Q1 and I can start. He's like, hey, I want more bass drum if this is the bass drum channel, for example, and then let's say this is the uh, overheads. I want less overheads, more overheads, and you can mix the whole thing. You can also do, click here on sends at the top left, and then you can choose which send. So here's Q1, and then now I can really quick turn things up and down for Q1 mix, um, and then getting them a really good mix. Um, a really cool trick that I really, really like. Um, you're turning things up and down, sending it to their ears, but you don't have an idea of what it sounds like. So really quick, what you could do, grab another headphone, plug it into headphone output two, headphone output two, and instead right now the headphone output two from the X6, it corresponds to Q2, 
I'm actually going to really quick try to make it Q1. And then I can listen to the same mix that I'm sending to my drummer. So that way, in, as an engineer, you want to get the job done quick, fast, and efficient. And sometimes musicians don't even know what they want. Uh, or they don't know where's the problem. Is it because the overheads are too hot or the bottom snare is too hot or whatever? So now being able to hear what they hear, you can quickly make adjustments to make it sound good. And that doesn't only apply on volume adjustments. That also applies on, because the Apollo console, you can have an EQ and compression and reverb and all kinds of stuff. So that's a great thing to do. And then make sure that it's applied in their ears really, really well. You can also, if you don't have a headphone and you want to listen to their mix on your main speakers in the studio, so instead of grabbing headphone two, I will go to the control room and then now my source changing it, instead of being mix, I will change it to Q1. And now my main barefoot speakers in my control room right here has become the same Q1 mix that my drummer is hearing and I'm making these adjustments on my speakers. Uh, and then I'm hearing what he's hearing. And now this apply on Q1, Q2, Q3, and Q4, and what mixes are you sending? Uh, so those are four stereo mixes or eight mono mixes, and then you get to choose however you wanted it to be. So I really like that feature about the Apollo console. Um, then right here, I'm gonna switch this back to auxiliary is, you're basically like your reverb, reverbs and delay, and if you're sending, uh, so this is auxiliary one, auxiliary two, for example, I have a reverb sit, sitting on auxiliary one, so if I'm tracking a vocalist, it's like, hey, I want more reverb in my ears, so I'll go to my sends, and I go to auxiliary one, and then let's say this is the vocal mic, and I'm sending verb, I want to make sure that that auxiliary is coming back to whatever mix that that vocalist is getting. So for example, let's say that vocalist, his mix is Q1. So I'll turn this all the way up actually. And then from here, I'm adjusting how much reverb he's getting in his ears. If they say I want more, I want less. And then again, you can put your mix at Q1 and you can listen to what the vocalist is singing. So that way you can make adjustments to this verb if it's it's too much, or it's too dark, too bright, I need to make some EQ to it and make it a lot cleaner, whatever it is. And that's how I would send them those. And then same, this is your second inserts as well. Talk back right here. Um, I'll walk you, I'll talk a little bit about this. I don't use it, but I'll show you guys how to use it because I have a dedicated channel here for talk back. So right here, if I am using my Apollo X4, this will be what I would do. Here's talkback. And then the talkback is coming through. Where is the talkback going through? Is it going through Q1, Q2, Q3, and Q4? So here's talkback to monitor. If that talkback is coming back to my monitors or not. And then right here is talk, test, test. And you guys can see. And this is how you would route that talkback to their ears. In my scenario, because I'm using a dedicated talkback mic, here you go. So I have it plugged into this channel. And then that's one thing I really like about the Apollo rack units. So the X4 doesn't have that feature, but any of the rack units have assignable outputs. And I'll show you here. So I have this talkback channel. And on my talkback channel, I can go in here and says, where is that going to go? Line outputs or monitor? or a specific. So I'm sending it to ADAT8. That's from the Apollo X8P, which makes it channel number 16 on my Behringer unit. And then you can mirror that to monitor or not. I don't want to mirror it to monitor because then it will also come through my speakers in my control room and it will cause a feedback. So I have it muted in my monitors. And then now if I click, press the talk button on my M908 and start talking, you guys can see that signal and it's only going through channel 16 on my Behringer units and is not happening in my control room at all. So I don't have feedback. And then once I turn it off, it's completely cut. Uh, really love that. So you guys can see here, do you see here output, output, all these are assignable outputs. 
all the way until I hit the C unit, which is the X4. You don't have that feature anymore. So I really like this because sometimes um, if I have a vocalist and then I have a big tracking session and instead of creating four cues, because that's four mixes, now I want to create 10 mixes. Well, I don't have 10 mixes. So instead of doing this, I would use the Apollo console as a soundboard. And then something like the drums, because the drums have already 12 channels. I'm not going to send him 12 different things on the P16. So I'll create a cue, send the cue to ADAT 1 and 2, and then I'll mix that cue for him to get a, a good stereo drums in his ears. But the bass, let's say, for example, analog 3 right here is the bass. I would actually go in here and then I will assign, so channel ADAT 1 and 2 are assigned already to my drums. As my stereo drum mix, ADAT 3 now becomes my bass. And I would mirror it out to monitor so I can hear it in my control room. And then if channel number 4 is acoustic, I will go and assign it to ADAT 4. And remember, because these inputs are on my Apollo X6, so that's sort of the first eight inputs of the ADAT on my Behringer unit. So channel three, that's gonna be channel three, channel four is gonna be channel four. But if I go here to the X8P and I would choose channel one, and I'm gonna call this my um, vocal mic. Vocal mic one. And if that is vocal mic one, and I'm, I'm signing it to ADAT one, that's gonna be channel number nine. Make sure it's unmuted. And it's also being mirrored to my room. And that's how I would end up creating mixes for my musicians. And I will use both benefits of the Apollo units. I will use the cue. So if I have something with several inputs and I would combine all of them into a stereo or mono depending and then send that to that musician. And if it's individual channels like this, especially if I have a big recording sessions uh, where I have like seven or eight musicians all at once, then I would just assign the outputs that way through ADAT to my P16 and now on their units, they can adjust. And then the last thing in here for monitoring for musicians, I'm gonna go to overview in here, uh, is the Apollo UAD monitor or record. This makes it now any insert you're gonna have. So let's say here's the base channel and I'm going to put a compressor. I love the API. So I'm gonna put that API on the base this is only for monitoring purposes for their ears, but it's not going to be recorded in my DAW. If I have it on record, once it's read, that means it's being recorded. So I'm not only monitoring, but I'm actually printing the audio through that compressor before it hits my DAW. Those two buttons down here makes every single channel recorded or every single channel is being monitored. But if you wanna do it individually, so let's say I have everything on monitor right now and I only want to print the stuff on the base. I will go to that little blue dot up here and I'll just click on it, turn it red. That means everything is being monitored except for the base is actually being printed. The only thing you cannot not monitor is your unison inserts because these are the actual mic preamp and the Apollo unit. So if I have something in here, um, like let's say I have my 1073 pre on this input, this is going to be printed no matter what. There is no way to not print that. But then anything I have on the inserts down here, if I have like an EQ or a compression or something else that I have down here, I can choose those to be recorded or just for monitoring reasons. The cool thing about this is not only that I can do this for the main UAD pre's, but I can also do this for other pre's. For example, you guys can see here, this is Focusrite channel five and six, which is I'm using the Focusrite preamps that I have down here. And then I come out as a line out of those preamps into a line in number five and six into my Apollo X6. Now that I'm using the pre and the color from the pre from the focus right, but in here I can put any inserts on it that is an API EQ or an SSL EQ 
or I can put an LA-2A or 1176 compressors or an API, whatever it is, and then I can choose it for monitoring purposes so they can hear it in their ears or I can also print it. And then that same applies to also your ADAT inputs supports the same. So you can see here all my 4710, they all have inserts on it that I can utilize and then put plugins in it. Basically, your Apollo console in this scenario, it literally works like a soundboard. If any of you have done front of a house engineering, you have a physical soundboard that you have stuff that goes in and then it goes out at zero latency. And that's why this was a game changer because if before I used to monitor from inside my DAW, well, here's the problem. If I'm monitoring from my DAW, then I have to run my buffer size at the lowest possible so I don't get latency. Well, if I have a big session and I have a lot of plugins in that session and I have a lot of still like virtual instruments and plugins like VSDs and stuff like that, so they're not printed into Wave yet, I cannot run my buffer size super low because the session CPU won't handle it. So instead of monitoring from my DAW, I monitor everything from here. And if there is something from my DAW I want to send to their ears, the easiest way I found to do it is I assign the output for it. So let's say you have a piano that is in your DAW that you want to send it to their ears and then everything else you're recording live along with it. So I will assign the output of that piano in my DAW, whether that is Pro Tools or Logic or Ableton, to one of my virtual instruments, to virtual instruments one and two right here. And I'll call that piano. And then it becomes an actual channel in my Apollo console. And then I could do whatever I want to do with it. Send it to a queue, assign it to an ADAD output. Uh, I can even process it if I want it to, to put some EQ on it or some reverb on it or whatever I want to for their ears purposes and not affect my mix. And this is how I'm using the Apollo in my setup. This setup that I just explained to you guys would make you flexible if you have a mixing session and then you, you're, you're assigning your outputs and inputs and ADAT outputs and inputs are set are different. And then if I'm recording, obviously it's going to be different. And if I'm mastering is also going to be different, but you can save these presets in your Apollo, depending on what are you doing and what is it being used for. And then all what you do is just recall that and boom, you got yourself a recallability for everything that you need in your Apollo console. Um, I love UAD. This is not a paid partnership, by the way. Uh, I've been using UAD for the last probably seven years now plus. Um, and they're very versatile. Their pre's quality are amazing. Um, their converters are great, better than some other con companies, but there are some other companies out there, their converters, like the Antelope converters, in my opinion, are superior to the UAD. Obviously, my M908 converters are superior and my Lynx converters are superior. Uh, but that's when you go to like high-end converters that are significantly more expensive than an interface at that point. I hope this video today uh, explains as much as I can out of my setup and how I'm routing everything in here. If you still have a question or this is still confusing for you or you want something that you have a question about how to do a specific item in your setup, Make sure that you put your questions in the comments below and tag me in it, and I will do my best to respond to your question and help you in your setup as much as I'm capable of. And uh, if you like this video, make sure to subscribe, and I'll see you guys at the next video.